So a bit of a different one this week, it's going to actually be a kind of 10 hour early access content creator program that I managed to get myself into on a game that I've been quite keen on and looking into but was waiting for a legal battle to end. Now with that ended, I ended up getting in the discord and I got my seller key and four of my guild members access to an early content creator program where you get into the game a couple of days before it will be wiped but you get to experience the game and I thought it'd be a good time for us to jump in and make Maybe get it up and learn the game before going new and fresh into a game we know nothing about and see what the game was and see if it was actually any good at all. So after playing 10 hours so far, the pros are the customization on the character creator is pretty decent, much better than most other survival games, even coming from Ark Survival Ascended, pretty lacklustre and I liked what you could do. Now man was a fairly normal character but you think they're weird and bizarre things, it's decent and you'll enjoy the character customization that you've got with it. Now you will notice I'm seemingly progressing quite fast and that's because the server had boosted rates I believe it was three times everything so the actual base game is not going to be this easy my initial feelings coming in was it was quite nice there was really no lag at all and I kind of wanted to check out the guild systems and how it worked and invite people in see what was going on see about the emblems inviting forking was fairly decent and there's a massive amount of customization for leading and rank settings and all these other things you could possibly want from stopping yourself getting stolen from or inside or something like that which instantly I really liked and I think should be implemented in other games it's kind of a no-brainer but I don't know why these other companies don't bother but to circle back on the guild recruitment when you recruit someone it actually tells you do you want to accept them and they can also apply for your guild if you put your guild up there and you can look through their application which is also another nice way and a decent recruitment tool for in-game as well as externally recruiting out of the game or people you might just come across you also have a guild emblem. It's pretty basic in the kind of other games I've come across as things like this before, but the fact that it's actually in a survival game and you do have some customization on it, it's pretty cool. It's kind of a bit like New Worlds, but I'd say it's actually more customizable, more options. Now, if they advance in that with personal symbols and stuff, that would be cool, but then at the same time, I understand the toxicity that comes with that, so that's maybe why they haven't done that. But as I say, the Motif emblem system was fairly decent. I kind of had a little dabble with it. I didn't get too deep into it because I really wanted to utilise my time the best we could on the game. So when it comes to crafting there's a large recipe tree that's broken down into several different categories. Now forget games like Ark for example or many of the other survival games there's actually quite a lot going on, a lot of customization for your personal character and other things and the gathering isn't even that basic like you would get from survival trees you get thatch wood that type of stuff the trees will give you branches or bark or hardwood stones give you rubble and stone and it breaks down into more and more and upscales into more and more so the advancement and the replayability and the customization and and just the freedom to do stuff and the level and process towards that is actually quite nice and fulfilling and when you add in this was a pve server and we were in enjoying it for me being a pvp player it was more a test but i enjoyed it and i didn't once think this is a pve server i like enjoyed my time there and it was to the point where i didn't want to log off like i kept wanting to grind and like get shit done so that is a really really good example for someone who does not like pve and it shows the standard of the game in my personal opinion now, when it comes to farming, obviously you start the game like this, steady early game farming by hand, farming with your guild, but then you can get machinery and plantations, and you can get your NPCs farming them, which is what it is you go around the world, capturing and beating, torturing on a rack, kind of like Conan, but a lot more complex than Atlas NPCs and that type of things, and you don't really have that on Ark either. So it was nice, and it's definitely going to be summer end game. I want to dive deeper into and how we could use these to kind of meta the game with certain towers and builds and other things and when you have smaller numbers you could really utilize these warriors these npcs you get to to your advantage for pvp or even pve to be more efficient as farming now when it came to the combat at first i was kind of fighting and just playing around and if i'm honest i was pretty dog shit it was weird but then when i started getting a feel for it and i started understanding what was happening where it hit where the target market was what weapons did what and how he angled just started feeling smoother and when you walk 
watch the gameplay, it doesn't look too impressive or too fun. That was my initial impression as I thought, well, the combat might be a bit lackluster, but when you're actually in doing the combat and fighting, like, it really gives you control. It's it's just, it's hard to explain, but to me, I actually, the more I played and the more I skilled up and leveled, the more I enjoyed the combat and understood the skill level once you add in the whole immersiveness of every detail within the game, how PvP could really be complex, how there could be different builds, and how you would have a couple of different guys using different builds to have a meta group that can potentially take out people and then when you fight other people they're using different shields or spears or certain things and you'd have to counteract that and this was just the very beginnings of the game but it was actually really nice and so far like I hadn't experienced any negatives and I don't think anyone else did really. Another thing I liked was the cycling through your building pieces so you have a wall but you can turn a wall into a doorway you don't have to make multiple different items it kind of changes for you but you still need to make the door which was nice. The snap points on the building was also something really nice. It wasn't like janky like some of the others where you snap fucking lopsidedly or on the wrong side and it's like what a fucking ball here. It was actually smooth as you can see in the screen. It's just like flawed and the animation for it was cool but one thing I did notice, obviously being a PvP guy coming from Ark, when you just spam stuff instantly and you push on fobs there, it can be annoying but the fact that you have a, a health timer so when you spam something it's not full health so if someone's fobbing you, you know attacking raiding your base, they're dropping stuff that isn't full health which means you can push them harder, they can't spam as much uh, and build certain items and they need to defend, it brings a lot more strategy to the warfare, now obviously I'm kind of reviewing this from more of a PvP's perspective and I am trying to get the whole picture of the gaming but this is what just kept coming to mind every time I was playing the game and just thinking of how these things would work and play out and I watched many videos and read you know the little booklet thing there, a pamphlet that was written up for it which was actually quite nice. They've got an in-game tutorial and guide. Another point was the combat. It does take skill and I mean it's not advisable to run into a horde of enemies that are just AI that you think is going to be stupid at early game that were quite challenging and they actually fucked us up, killed us and, and they were doing serious damage. Now I don't know if we were meant to be fighting these right now, kind of felt like we could, we were like level 23, 24 and we went in and these guys, man they were smashing us. So we maybe didn't have the right armour or other stuff but we did fuck them up eventually and kill them but it was like quite challenging and you could easily be swarmed by them. So I like that. As well i liked it that it wasn't just easy and you could just you know it was a challenge to go in there and actually fight these and have some type of actual chance of dying in game where it's just not one tap and everything when it comes to the guild buildings it goes down as plots and you've got to build components with resources from the inventory to complete the whole building and it was actually another thing i liked yeah it is pve but i like seeing this i like seeing it develop as you go and invested in it it was uh it was quite nice and i'm happy they've implemented this and I mean that can add in stuff with PvP but I think it's more a PvE aspect that and yeah as you can see it develops it comes into some cool you know you pot it down the floor and then you kind of work together to build it up which is fairly decent I imagine this is potentially some of the goes on with the siege weapons can't guarantee that yet because I never got to that point we didn't really test it out being that it was a PvE server now when it comes to issues there was a funny moment where we were going to fight and then I kind of with a few of us fell into this kind of hole all this jagged rock edge and we couldn't escape so you were putting like an infinite floating glitch so then we had to mallet and spam jump to get out now this is quite common in many games that are sandboxy it can be quite annoying probably put a bug ticket in and then the bits patched it's, it's fairly easy to fix stuff in manger but what we then did is we decided for the leader of the ai's the boss there we'd pull him in and then we'd kill him so we actually utilized that to advance and we just pulled him in and beat him to death in the thing obviously it's not an intended game mechanic some of the probably should look at and i'll probably put a, a bug feedback in for that but honestly it's, it's nothing that major that was the only thing we came across that was buggy i was actually quite shocked because i thought the game was going to be a bit of a shit show but with the npcs as you can see like being quite challenging and them just fucking hoarding you it was it was definitely a different play and we were trying to get loads done and trying to progress so when we go into 
day one the guild knows what we're doing and we've got some footage and content and whatnot and um, but i enjoyed my experience so far and so did the guild nobody had any negatives i think a couple of people commented on the graphics but when you've played like valheim or ark survival ascended or conan or any of these i'm gonna be honest it's better graphics better customization so yeah maybe they could do with jumping on something like ue5 or some shit like that but i don't think that's a big deal till you've got a couple of years and they've got more funding and if it's even something they want to do but for me personally i'm less bothered about the graphics and more the content more fixing bugs more anti-cheat that type of stuff and it seems they're going fairly hard on that and they are really putting a lot of effort into that and that's where numbers stay and and that's what counts for me like developers that actually give a shit about the player base stop cheating and, and in a competitive game like that that's really what you want you want to know the people who win you or you win you were better or they were better not that they were exploiting the way to fuck you up i've seen a lot of stuff in the discord as well and been stalking a lot of posts talk to a lot of guild members bigger alliances and and guilds over there and it seems quite positive so far and with the patch they bring with this which is what i was testing the 1.0 patch on the new dlc map it was actually really nice i haven't checked or played the old map but from what i gather people love that too so they do have two solid maps to start with and the content and the patch notes i brought out was absolutely ridiculous you could clearly see a lot of work had been put in people have been putting suggestions in the discord and you know had replies and the communication from the devs personally with myself from private messages was fast was efficient were quite polite um and you know they've got a lot of people coming in and asking this stuff and it was quite a good experience so overall communication with them getting the keys getting my guys in the servers you know the actual community so far i imagine it's going to be fairly fucking toxic because well it's a competitive survival game but i haven't come across that i've come across some fairly decent people um and it, you know it definitely is a lot different than what i'm used to now i will be getting into the breeding and the skill trees and all the customization horses have and the fact that they die with age and when you breed them certain times it decreases the lifespan and the horses can be killed and and all this crazy shit but I can't really get into the breeding because I never really got that level yet. You know, I'd been playing for 10 hours, so it just wasn't enough time. But horse taming is different. So you kind of have to craft crude hair, which is kind of what you chuck on the floor in front of them to get them to turn away. You angle behind them and you pre-make your reins. And from that point to tame them, you have to throw the crude reins on, sneak up behind them while they're distracted to ride them. And while you're riding them, you get increased obedience and anger. If that anger reaches max, before the obedience there's a mini game to get it back down or you get flung off the team and then i imagine it totally fucks you but with the level of this team that you currently see me getting and the server rate it was pretty instant you know as you say it was a perfect team but when you go for higher level teams and i think there's heavenly horses and stuff like this that's where you're going to get a, a lot of challenge a lot of depth so i'm just going to end the video now and say that on my initial impressions day one playing for 10 hours we've fought other people and and we did go at the game pretty hard we were trying to learn as much as we can obviously for content but at the same time to get us up and when we do go day one in the game against people that have been playing and we've obviously never played I genuinely enjoyed my time to the point where I didn't want to come off but I had work so I had to jump off and get some real life shit done. I'll definitely be jumping right on after I've edited this video. I've quickly knocked this out so it's ready for launch and then I can fully invest my time in the game and the video's done. I personally think if you're looking for a game that's a survival game, a bit of MMO, a bit of RPG, I would check it out, give it a go, maybe even start on the PVX or PVE servers but the best experience is always going to be on the PVP server. And just just finally, obviously, shout out to Angela Games for actually giving us five codes. And by the looks of it, I'll actually be getting a game key or two to give away as well, which is pretty awesome for just coming into the game. It's really nice to see this type of environment when you come into a new type of survival game and community. Also, really do appreciate the guys that jumped on, got on the roster with me, cracked on, got as much content and checked it all out, which made things much easier than if I'd went in on my own. But as always, really appreciate you watching the video and catches in the next one. Cheers.